Welcome back. I'm Nutrix, and this is the filter course for the Gaia 2. Now, it's part of my free synth course on the Gaia 2 that is online. If you didn't see it, go see the oscillator first, oscillators of the Gaia. And this one, we're going to look at the filter, how it works, what it does. So let's dive in right away. So remember that you have in the oscillator section, you can have very complex waveform and the fact that you combine them together with the mixer or with the sync or the ring or the cross mod can have very rich frequencies, you know? As you remember, you can have these very noisy, aggressive tones. You can have these different way of combining them that when you're... But still, it means that outside of moving in these frequency or these content, you still have all that activity in the frequency all the time. And a lot of acoustic instruments, when you play them, they, not a lot of it, most of the acoustic instruments, when you play them, they will go through a richness and then they will get to a either die out or stay at one. Um, one type of richness. What I mean by that is, let's say you 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 struck a guitar chord. Well, the first impact of the the string will actually generate more harmonics, and then it will kind of settle at a lower level and die out. Most of the instruments are like that. Even in the bow, when you play a string, a violin, uh, when you push it on it, you will have the beginning of it will have more richness, and then it will settle down with less richness. And when I say richness is how many harmonics you have. So let's let's say I'm gonna go with very easy, I'm just gonna have one oscillator, it's gonna be a sawtooth. Very rich, I mean the richest possible without going to inharmonics. And the filter here, you have two sections. We get how the filter is behaving using the envelope, so over time, and how it is with the key follow, how is it following the keys? And the filter itself is in this section. So the cutoff point, which is very important, where you're going to cut the frequencies, the type of slope, the type of filter. Is it an LP, which is a low pass, bend pass, or a high pass? And the drive, which actually happens before going to the cutoff point. So let's just go with the cutoff right away. You see, you go from very rich to we're cutting all the frequencies down to the first one, which is just a root key. And this is because we're in a low pass. A low pass, let pass the frequency that are lower than the cutoff point. So as you go up, more frequency passes through it. If you want to enhance the frequencies around the cutoff point, you can use the resonance, also sometimes called Q. You can take this and you're boosting around the cutoff point. So let's say the cutoff right now. So you see that the cutoff point is exactly here. 826 hertz. And it's actually, if I move this, you see where my cutoff point is. Now, the other thing that is important is how fast the frequency are being cut. So we've got a 24 dB slope. It means that every time you go away an octave away from the cutoff point, one way or the other, depending if you're high pass, bend pass, or low pass, 20, it will drop 24 dB every time you move away from one octave. So it's 24 dB per octave drop or cutting. So that's the speed at which it cuts. I go here. If I go 12, you see now this slope is a lot softer. So it drops 12 dB every time you move away one octave. And you see in the graphic also, this is a 12, this is the 18. So 18 dB as you go away one octave and 24. Now 18 is something we don't see often. Roland is 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 you know fan of it because it's the slope, if I'm not mistaken, of the TB303. So you can have a different, it has its own sound and its own way of amplifying. Now, Resonance can just 
enhanced frequencies around the cutoff point, but also can become self-isolating. So let's say we switch, just for fun, we switch to noise here. Am I the one? No, this is the one that we're listening. Noise. So a noise is this, okay? All the frequencies. You bring cutoff point, let's say here, and you bring this up. It becomes oscillate. So you just hear one frequency. Still some noise at the background, but and then you go, well, it doesn't play. What you could do, you could use the key follow to say every time I move the keys up, it's gonna follow. The cutoff point will go up the keys, and every time I, I use the key follow, if I go up like that, if I go, and I'm actually playing the filter. So you would have, if you want to add another sound, well, you can't because all of them, they go through the filter. So you'd have to tune it to whatever, whatever else you're playing from another synthesizer to say, this is how I want it to. And if you bring it down, you're gonna have a noise that you can play. but it becomes less obvious. Okay, I just dropped that because it was logical to talk about the resonance, the fact that it can be self-oscillating, and the fact that you can actually control it by the key follow. So let's bring that down, bring that up here, and let's go back to a Satu. Okay. Now, we were talking about the low pass. High pass, it's the same logic, but you're cutting the other way around. So this is hopefully, this is a, a low pass, a, a high pass that is entirely open. And as you go up, you're cutting the low frequency first. The bass is gone, and then you just have the harmonics. So this is less useful in general, because most acoustic instruments, when you play them, you have an evolution of the harmonics, but you always have the root key, which is the lowest one. So in this case, you're getting rid of the root key and you'll hear just the harmonics. So it's a weird sound when you compare to acoustic instruments. It's still gonna be pretty cool, but it's harder to follow because you don't have that root key anymore. You don't have it here also when you bring that back in. Okay, now I've got my root key. But then you bring that up. It's kind of, it's lacking presence in a way. So it's less something that we see. We never see this only. I mean, it's kind of a option too, but we always have a low pass. And the bend pass is the two at the same time. So it's a low pass and a bend and a high pass at the same time. So we always have the same width moving. Bring the resonance up. And they go, well, it's not so obvious sometimes. Because, let's say we bring it up. So of course it's, a, it's slightly, it's less, there's less presence because there's less frequencies, but now we get into the cool thing about the drive. Drive is, let's bring that, let's open all of this. We have our original sound. If you bring drive, you're basically overdriving the sound, you're distorting it. So it's still gonna be very nice sounding because it's happening, it happens before, happens before the cutoff point. See, that's normal, that's driving it. So it changes the harmonics, but also boosts, boosts them. So it's a little bit of like tone control, if you want. Like this is a sawtooth, this is a sine wave, sorry. Then as you move this up, it's kind of clipping and becomes more like a square wave. You have it here. 
and as you bring that bring that down. So by default, it changes the sound to something else. And add harmonics. You see that all of these they kind of push in louder. You see it also on the graph. All of these high-end frequencies are less present, but if you move this up, they become more present. But they're not super obvious, so it's part of the tone control. But it becomes interesting as you move this and you bring this up. So if you don't go to the max, just before the max, you hear more of it. See, when you go too loud, it's kind of takes off the resonance in this case. So this is where I would fit. It becomes kind of a bizarre harmonic on top of it. I like the fact that the key follow works really well here. Because it becomes just another harmonics playing with it. So in a way, the logic behind the drive is to bring in more frequency, like boosting some harmonics and content before going into the cutoff point. So if you try all of them, you see, this is the original one. I'm gonna bring that in the clipping type of sound. Now, what becomes interesting is when you add the movement of the envelope. So for now, I'm just going to talk about the fact that you can add the depth of the envelope and but we'll do another video just about the envelope but that's all everything happens and then when we go back to and the bend pass. Thank you. 
Let's jump for the amplifier right away. The, amp the amplifier is you have the volume. It's kind of a treble. More bass, less high. More high, less bass. Kind of tune it. And you only have the amplitude amp here. So it's very simple. And this, we'll come back to this in the next video, is going to be about envelopes. That's it for today. Hope it's actually useful. Any question about sound design, remember that in the later videos, what I'll do is design sounds from scratch. Of course, classic sounds, but also sounds that you would like to hear. So write down in the comments if any type of sound you're looking to be able to do, even uh, link to examples or you know, write down the sound in this song or whatever it is. Point me into the direction of what you would like to, to be able to create out of your synth. And I'll try to do a video about how I would make them. That's it. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. Cheers.